Well, hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Wasman, and today we're going to be wrestling with some number stories. The only difference this time around is that uh, some of the numbers in our number stories involve decimals. We're on our home links, Unit 8, Lesson 7, and let's take a look at problem number 1. It says, an Olympic men's shot put weighs 7.26 kilograms. An Olympic women's shot put weighs 4 kilograms. How much more does the men's shot put weigh than the women's shot put? Okay. Now this can be a little tricky because on the surface, it's just a simple subtraction problem, right? 7.26 kilograms minus 4 kilograms. And so you would line up your problem, maybe if you wrote it horizontally like this, 7.26 minus 4 equals, and sometimes kids will give you an answer that looks like this, 7.22. Now on the surface, that looks right, right? 6 minus 4 is 2, right? So that must be my difference. Well, the problem with that is that we're ignoring the fact that we are dealing with two numbers with multiple place values. And I said two numbers with multiple place values, including this one. Now you're thinking to yourself, wait, I just see one digit, four, so that's one place value, right? Well, not when we're comparing it to seven and 26 hundredths of a kilogram, okay? So let me write that problem again vertically, okay? 7.26 minus 4. Now the placement of that 4 is important. And what might be useful for you to know is that that decimal point right there is denoting the difference between whole numbers and fractions of a number. Now, just like when I'm in the store and I want to buy something and I see that it costs $4, I don't say $4 in no sense, I just say $4. But in my mind, when I write out or represent $4, it's going to be written like this, 4 with a decimal point, 0, 0. Those zeros represent change or cents, tenths and hundredths, or dimes and pennies. When something costs $4 exactly, I don't have to have any extra dimes or pennies involved. But in terms of place value, the 4 is uh, a whole number. Okay. Now, we're not talking dollars here. We're actually talking about kilograms. So when I line up this subtraction problem here, I have to include some place value holders. It's those zeros right there that are doing the job. I don't talk about them when I'm just thinking kilograms, when I have exactly 4 kilograms, I don't say 4 kilograms and no grams. I just say 4 kilograms. But when, I comp when I'm comparing it to uh, an amount which has a fractional component, that's when I have to involve those zeros. So in reality, 7 and 26 hundredths minus 4 is going to leave me with a difference of 3 and 26 hundredths. Okay. You know all those times that your teachers have asked you to include some estimation before you come up with the actual answer? Does that sound familiar at all? Okay. Now, if you were asked to round these uh, amounts to the nearest kilogram, you would round 7 and 26 hundredths down to 7 because it's not quite to that set a halfway point of seven and a half kilograms, okay? So I would round this down and just make this seven, right? So I would just have seven kilograms minus four. And if I'm just subtracting whole amounts of kilograms, I can e easily see that seven minus four is going to give me an answer of three. So when I compare that to the actual answer here involving this fractional portion, the 26 hundredths, it makes sense. Or at least, I hope it makes sense to you as you are watching me demonstrate this concept. Okay? Now there's two other problems that you need to attempt, and they both involve decimals, which means they're involving fractional place values. Okay? So I'm going to give you an opportunity to try 
problem number two and number three. If I do them all for you, then you don't get the practice, and I rob you of the opportunity of getting better at this skill. It's, it's helpful when I just show you, but it's better that I teach you how to fish versus just give you a fish, okay? I will, on the other hand, teach you how to multiply a large digit number like 3,579 times 4. I think today I'm going to use partitioning rectangles just for fun. 3,579. 3,579. I just wrote that number out in extended form, showing you each of the four place values, okay? And then I'm going to multiply each one by the other factor of 4. 4 times 3 is 12, so that would be 12,000. My mangled number here is actually 500, okay? Let's make that a little prettier, okay? 3,500. There, that's clear. If I multiply 500 times 4, that's going to give me 20 hundreds, otherwise known as 2,000. 70 times 4 is 280, and 9 times 4 is 36. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take all four of my partial products. You didn't know you were doing that when you did partitioning rectangles, did you? Well, I bet you put that together a long time ago. So I'm going to compare all my partial products, and I'm going to add them together. It's going to give me my new complete product, which is 14,316. 14,316. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it steers you in the right direction. If you're still kind of muddling through, if you still have questions, that's when you uh, reach out and talk to your real, live, in-person, living, breathing math teacher. Okay? These videos, like I said, are very helpful, but they're not intuitive. They don't predict when you might still need help, but a real person can, like your math teacher. They will be happy to help you if they know you need help. So until we talk again, friends, have a good day. See you soon.